Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to True Doug Man Encounters. I'm your host, Marvin Allen. Again, I want to apologize to my listeners and subscribers because I haven't been uploading anything, but I do have, you know, new material. So without further ado, we're going to get into this encounter. Now, this encounter happened in 2014. And it happened in Washington State, close to the United States border, you know, but closer with Canada. And it was during the fall season. And it was going into winter. Now, Thomas said his grandfather had rented a camp, cabin for him and his brother, you know, because they was going up there and go um, elk hunting. So, said after they got situated and settled down, said they went out around... 5.30 in the morning, you know, and they was up in, you know, 20-foot tree stands, you know. So he said while they was, you know, just sitting there waiting, you know what I mean, they was making elk calls, but, you know, they ain't hear nothing, you know what I mean. He said it was just it was just dead silence. He said they didn't, they didn't hear nothing, you know what I mean. You couldn't even hear a pin drop. He said so while they just, you know, still in this tree stand, he said, um, you know, you know, the sun was getting ready, you know, to peek over the mountains. But, you know, it wasn't there yet. It still was dark, but it was getting morning. He said, then the wind shifted. He said, and they smelt this horrible, I mean, horrible odor. He said, this, it, it, it smelled it like, a, he said, it smelled it like a dead body, like something was decaying. You know, meaning that it was rotten. Then they could smell urine. So, Thomas told his brother, he said, I got to go to the bathroom. He said, well, hurry up. Go down and, you know, do what you got to do and, and, and get back up here. So, Thomas said he started to climb down this tree from out this 20-foot tree stand. So, he said, before he could get to the bottom, he said... This large rock came hurling over at him, striking him in the head. Thomas said he fell to the ground, got back up. He noticed that his head was bleeding. So his brother tells him, Thomas, hurry up, hurry up. Get back up in this tree stand. Hurry up, get up here. So Thomas said, even though he was bleeding and a little dizzy, he climbs back up. Into this tree stand, and his brother points about 30 yards up across over into the tree line. He said, Look. So when Thomas looked over there, he said he could see this huge figure peeking from behind this tree. Now he said this tree was large. He said this tree was large, but he said he could still see where this thing had his arm wrapped around the other side. And he could see that this thing had shoulders. Now, mind you, on the other side, he could see a snout sticking out, a snout. Then he seen this one ear sticking straight up. So he telling his brother. What the fuck is that? So they don't know what it was. But he said he knew that this thing was huge. He knew that this thing was big. So as Thomas and his brother, you know, was looking at this thing, they trying to figure out, you know, what is it? You know what I mean? Because they said this thing had the head of a dove. A huge dove. So, Thomas said, after a few more seconds, they noticed another huge rock being thrown. Now, Thomas looks out the scope of his 308, and he scans the tree line. Say, when he scans the tree line, he looks to the right of where they seen the first Creature at looking for behind a tree. He said that when he looked to the right, about 25 yards, he seen another one. 
Now, this one steps from behind the tree, said this thing was fucking humongous. He said because he know for a fact that the first branch up in this tree was about 15 feet. He said this thing was so goddamn tall, man, he said this thing had to duck under it. To stop it from hitting his head. He said this thing had to duck down. To go past that tree. From where that first branch comes out at. He said this thing had the pointy ears. The long snout. He said this thing. He said this thing was just huge man. It was just muscular. He said this thing was cut up like a bodybuilder. It had the canine legs. He said this thing did have a tail. Said this thing did have a tail. He said this thing was just standing out. And it was just looking, it was just looking dead at them. So Tom is still looking out his 308 scope at this thing. Then he shines it back over to the other one. Now, mind you, this other one is still peeking from behind this huge tree. Now he's looking at it through the scope. He could see that this thing got eye shine. Because he see that one eye, this thing peeking around the tree at him at. So he know that this thing that he see, it looks just like the other creature that stepped from behind the tree. Now they both watching this thing. He said, and after a few minutes, he said the sun started coming up. He said the sun coming up now. He said they could, they could really see these creatures. He said these creatures was dark. He said they was just he said they was just black as hell, man. He said when the sun came up, he said these creatures turned and started to walk up in the tree line. He said and when they was walking up in this tree line, he said they were so big, man, they was ducking down under the trees. Now, mind you, Thomas said this encounter happened in 2014. He said he never told anyone because he didn't want to think people thought that he was crazy. Man, when he told me this encounter, I told him, I said, man, I believe you because I had an encounter of my own. I seen one of these things down in the South. So he said the whole time that they was up there for two weeks, they didn't see not one elk. For the whole two weeks, not none. He said every time they would go out, dead silence. That horrible smell. Dead silence. That horrible smell. He said that's all for the whole two weeks. He said about two days before they left, he said they go out again. They go out again. Because he said he didn't think they was going to see them creatures no more. They go out again. He said, but this time they didn't get to make it up into the tree stand. Said it was about the same time when they went out there. Said, and when they got there, right there where them tree stands was at, and they was getting ready to go up in them. Said, that's when they heard that growl, that low growl that they could feel vibrate their body. Heard that low growl. And when they looked about 20 yards up in that tree line, said he seen one of those creatures step from behind the tree, eyes yellow like the sun. This time they only seen one. He said, but this thing was huge. Thomas said he took that 308, aimed it, boom, shot it at the tree. He said when he shot this thing at the tree. He said this creature didn't even flinch, didn't even move. So his brother was saying, man, shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. Thomas kept saying, man, no, I'm not, I, I ain't going to shoot this thing with that, man. I don't know if it's going to take it down or not. I ain't going to do it. And I don't even know if there's another one out here or not. So Thomas and his brother, they decide to leave. They left. They went. They went back to their cabin. They called their grandfather, say, look. You know, I mean, we, we, we ready to come home, man. We ready to leave. We ain't see no elk. We ain't kill no elk. Grandfather was asking him, what was wrong? Why y'all ready to come? Man, look, we just ready to come back, granddad. That's all. 
And that was Thomas Encounter, man. And he said that happened up in Washington State, man. Like I told him, I said, man, these things are everywhere, man. And I believe you. And he said, man, there's one thing I don't have no reason to lie because I ain't gaining nothing out of it. That was the first time I ever seen these things or know what they was. And I say, man, they dug men. That's what all, that's, that's what they are. Half human, half dugs. He said that was his first time saying these things, man. He said he had nightmares about them. He don't want to see no more. So that was his encounter. And, um, like I said, um, I hope y'all like that. Um, as a bonus, I got another encounter. But this is, a, this encounter is a little different. It's a little different. And the reason why I want to do this encounter is because this came from an older guy that I talked to. And he said this happened when he was in Vietnam. And his name is Mr. Sylvester. And I gave it a little title. He said, the title that I gave this was Mr. Sylvester Encounter with giant humanoid ape-like rock creatures. He's saying it happened in Vietnam. So I'm going to get straight into this because this is like a bonus. I just wanted to do this for y'all because, I, I mean, I liked it, the story. Mr. Sylvester said it happened in the Asaw Valley, known as the North Rocket Pocket. Mr. Sylvester said that he had a squad of 12 men. Said they was chasing the VCs, you know, Vietnamese. They were chasing the VCs through the thick canopy. He said, but as they was chasing these VCs, he said he noticed that they kept disappearing. Like they didn't know where they was going at. He said, and as they was going through this canopy, this canopy would lead out to an open and then it would lead to this valley. But they didn't see no VCs. He said, so when they got to this valley, he was, you know, he's like, they thought they was lost, you know. But their mission was to, 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 to keep after these VCs, you know, and, and, you know, and kill the enemy. That's all. That's that's what their mission was. So they kept on going through this valley. So as they continue to walk through this valley, they said that it, you know, it was mountains on both sides coming through this valley. And he said, then you could see that they had caves. Now, mind you, they looking up at these caves, but they don't see nothing. He said, so as they walking, Mr. Sylvester, who was leading point, said that he could, you know, hear rocks coming down from the side of these mountains and up there where these caves at. So he would tell his squad to stop and they would look up, see the rocks coming down. So they thinking that these is the VCs up there. So... They got their guns ready, which they was using M16s. So Mr. Sylvester say, look, if you see anything, man, shoot. So they stop. They looking. They don't see nothing. Then Mr. Sylvester look over on the other side and he sees something runs. Cross this cave inches. He said it was fast. He don't know what it was, but he said he seen something run. So he said something running across, you know, cave into. So a guy in his squad started shooting, brrr, shooting the M16. And Mr. Defensor said, stop shooting, stop shooting. So when they look up there, they don't see nothing. All you can see is that the bullets hitting the, the rock and it's making dust and all that stuff. So. Mr. Sylvester said, come on, let's keep walking because they round here somewhere. He said, so as they walked, all they heard was something go, boom, said this big boulder just came down and landed on one of them men, smashing them and killed them. He said this boulder was humongous, not no little rock. He said this was a boulder. I mean a big one. He said it came down and it crushed one of these men. Now it's 11 of them, 11 of them left now. So Mr. Sylvester say stop. 
Look around. We got to check this area because I don't know where that boulder come from. They thought that maybe, you know, some Vietnamese pushed it, you know, pushed it down. But he said it was too huge, you know, for them little Viet VCs, you know, to, to push or even pick up. So they looking. So Mr. Sylvester say, look, they looks up there. By, the, by, by this cave, one of these caves. They look up there. They see something. But the thing that they see, they said it blended in to the rocks so well that you didn't, you, you would, you would, you would have thought that it was part of the mountain. He said this thing moved. And when it moved, it's like it was stooping down, he said, but he said when it moved, he said, then it stood up. He said when it stood up, he said it was this giant humanoid ape-like creature. He said this thing was big. I mean, he said it was huge. He said then it stepped out and it stood there and it started making noise like, like it was communicating. He said, when it made that noise, that's when a lot of them start coming out. That's when Mr. Sylvester say, shoot them, kill them. He said, they let loose on them um, M16s, yo, just shooting them. He said, the bullets wasn't doing nothing. He said, then these things just started throwing these huge boulders back down toward they, to where they was. Hitting three more men and killing them. Now it's only eight. So they running and spreading out. These things is running up on the side of these mountains, man. Like, like it had a ridge where these caves at. And they running and they throwing these big boulders. That's when Mr. Sylvester said, get the M79 grenade launcher. They took one shot, he said. He said they shot that thing up there. He said, but these creatures were so fucking fast it would hit to where the cave was but they would move so the bullets wasn't doing nothing that launcher didn't do shit but hit the side of the cave he said these things was fast he said they looked it almost human and the way they was talking it's like they was communicating with each other he said these things was just they was just they was just huge. He said now he know why the VCs took them that way because they knew that they knew that these humanoid creatures lived it in that valley. He said that when they released it this in the paper, they didn't tell about that. They didn't tell about that. They didn't tell their story. He said because he let them people know what they saw in Vietnam, in that valley, that they saw them giant humanoid creatures. He said, but the paper just covered it straight up. He said, the men that we lost, they lied in the paper about all that. So Mr. Sylvester, who is now going on 70 years old, man, he told me this encounter, man. I just wanted to put it out there because I thought that, it was um it was interesting because I didn't know. I mean, I know about the Bigfoots and everything like that. He said, but these was just humanoid ape rock like creatures. He said like they had it's like he said like they bodies, they 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 chest was like made of rocks. He said, cause the M16 wasn't doing nothing. It was like they was just, you know, like the bullets was just bouncing off of them. And he said they was huge. You talking, he said it, they had to be at least 12 to 14 feet tall. And he said they wasn't throwing no small boulders. He said they was throwing boulders the size of a desk. He said that's how big these boulders was, man. And he said they lost some good men that day chasing after these VCs, man. So that was Mr. Sylvester Encounter. Man, I just threw that in as a bonus. Hope you like it. And, um... Let me know what you think and um, enjoy the rest of your day. And I'm going to upload this. Thank you.